Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Theory. Today we have invited Mr. Aya Moshe, the CEO of Hub Security. Welcome. Thank you. So could you give a brief introduction about yourself and what Hub Security does? Yes. So I'm based out of Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. just by the beach. <laughs> it's a beach city. It's a gorgeous city. Mm -hmm. You should visit. Um, I've been to the Israeli army uh, for several years and my co-founders for the company has been there for many, many years uh, doing cyber security for mm -hmm. the Israeli military. Mm -hmm. And the idea for our cyber security solution came out of, uh, you know, the same concepts that are being practiced in the army. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the implementation of our security solutions are very much, uh, uh, they got a lot of inspiration from from the army, from the way things are being architected in the army. Mm -hmm. So it must have took you a lot to move from the army to the blockchain world where you uh, compose your own business. So what caught your eye on the whole business, like blockchain business-wise? Um, well, it was when Bitcoin started to grow in terms of scale and <laughs> worth. Yes. <laughs> where, you know, uh, it was actually my co-founders who uh, recognized the possibilities when Bitcoin uh, crossed the two hundred uh, the two hundred dollars barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, then they were like, "Ooh, this is interesting." And this like, was like uh, the 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 starting point mm -hmm. of the project. So you guys, you, you three went out. Three is it? Th this is uh, this is back in twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen, yes. Yeah, um, and. Uh, uh, it was developed, you know, in the garage mm -hmm. <laughs> since 2013. Uh, the company uh, was set about a year ago mm -hmm. uh, after intensive development mm -hmm. uh, that happened before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So moving on to Hub Security, uh, yep. what do you guys mainly deal with? So we are dealing with major risks around blockchain. Mm -hmm. Uh, blockchain transactions, the way you secure um, everything you do that involves uh, a blockchain transaction. Mm -hmm. um, it can be something for a home user mm -hmm. like yourself who is holding Bitcoin or Ethereum or other uh, cryptocurrencies and you want to make sure that you will not be hacked mm -hmm. and that your money will not be stolen. Mm -hmm. And also to exchanges, we provide solution uh, solutions for exchanges that will help them deal with the many many problems that we're hearing recently uh, with hacks mm -hmm. to exchanges, and will still be relevant for the scale and the volume that they have to uh, you know work with on a daily basis. So you mentioned about uh, the hacks on exchanges. And yeah. Korea recently suffered, uh, Bitthumb, CoinRail suffered a huge amount of hacking. So what's the cause, what's the factor behind the constant threats of hacking when it comes to exchanges and blockchain? I think uh, this is my own personal opinion. I, I Sorry. Uh, I think this, this is uh, usually people don't take it security uh, serious enough mm -hmm. um, and they believe that you know if something is on the cloud and uh, there's Amazon or Google or whoever it is that's uh, that they're running the servers on mm -hmm. it will be secured but in fact it's really not it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if the server is under your desk or at Amazon uh, some uh, level of securities has to, you know, be applied, mm -hmm. and in many cases there is simply not. Mm -hmm. um, th that that's you know, it, it's in in many uh, in many cases it is sometimes based on a human error. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's just people who don't have the expertise. To do proper cybersecurity, you have to be an expert in this field. Mm -hmm. And I think that exchanges all around the world are now discovering that they need real experts to help them 
secure everything from the process to how they manage the funds to how they transfer the funds to how they are doing you know uh, the interaction with the user the interaction with the entire flow there's a flow between you know your hardware wallet whatever it is and how you interact with the exchange and how it gets back to your hands basically mm -hmm. um, and lacking of a of a strong flow that is backed by cyber experts mm -hmm. there are a lot of risks so uh to as a solution i heard that you guys released a hardware wallet so could you yes. give a little bit of explanation about that Yes, so for our hardware wallet, we have uh, implemented, um, you know, it was very much inspired by uh, our time in the army and uh, uh, the military um, concepts and architecture uh, was uh, highly inspired in what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a true separation i don't know if you're aware but i think that this misconception calling uh you know current solutions cold storage wallet is really a misconception mm -hmm. uh, because when you're not using it it's a cold storage wallet but mm -hmm. when you're using it and you're you know plugging a usb device to your computer that's connected to the wi-fi mm -hmm. this is a hot storage it's wallet yes it's basically it's working and connected to the internet right yeah it's a huge problem this is a big vulnerability mm -hmm. and i think it's a misconception for the market mm -hmm. and do you have do you guys have a demo prototype release currently we have a demo prototype i can show you i'm going to show how the hardware wallet works uh, i'm going to first um, open it up okay we're seeing it open. And now uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't connect to a wire. It's uh, Bluetooth based, it has a battery. And uh, the second big thing is that the user experience, which is very important to us, is super simple. This is how I'm sending money to, uh, you know, to you, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm connecting it uh, to Bluetooth. Now it's connected. I'm going to send you uh, some Satoshis, 230, I'm hitting send, we should be able to see it in the wallet uh, in a second, you can see 230, I'm pressing OK, and this was done, this was now processed on the blockchain, and you can see the transaction right here on the blockchain and this is how simple it is to use our hardware wallet. It took like 15 seconds, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's exactly how simple it is. So, Hub Security, uh, you guys mentioned about how you guys are releasing a new hardware wallet. I'm pretty sure that it's a bit com com competitor to Ledger S. So, compared to the prior models out in the market, what does the hardware wallet of Hub Security have? So we have uh, a color touchscreen mm -hmm. uh, based device. Mm -hmm. It's uh, truly mobile. Mm -hmm. It has a battery and it works over encrypted Bluetooth, mm -hmm. even though we're not uh, trusting the connected area. Mm -hmm. uh, we are considering the Bluetooth part to be at risk, mm -hmm. uh, but we're still using the encrypted uh, Bluetooth just in case. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the big uh, difference is that uh, using a mobile phone rather than a computer with a Wi-Fi is much harder to hack mm -hmm. because you're getting your IP and your data from, from your mobile uh, provider mm -hmm. and you know the entire process is harder to hack mm -hmm. um, and that's on top of other security defenses that we have uh, on this device. We have um, a physical separation of uh, between the part that is connected to the internet through Bluetooth mm -hmm. and the part that is dealing with the secret, mm -hmm. with the signature area part. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a physical separation inside the board mm -hmm. between those parts. Okay. 
So do you guys have a fixed launch date for this uh, pro uh, hardware wallet? Not yet, uh -huh. um, but uh, we're starting manufacturing in about eight weeks. Mm -hmm. We're starting to do mass manufacturing, mm -hmm. and then we're going to start uh, marketing. So uh, maybe our audience can expect to see a Hub Security hardware wallet uh, within the year, maybe? Uh, probably within six months. Within six months? Yeah, in the store. <laughs> So, uh, do you guys have any uh, expecting price range for your hardware wallet? Because uh, that's a not yet. However, something that should be very interesting for the market is that um, you know how on every stage you hear uh, a blockchain expert saying that you shouldn't buy a Trezor or Ledger unless you're buying it from them mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. uh, because it's a security risk buying from someone else. Yes. Um, you don't know. You can trust, you know, if it has been hacked or yes, if there's a problem during the, process, right? uh, during the process of the shipment or if the reseller has tampered with yes. the device, it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to fix this issue. Mm -hmm. And so you can do uh, things like a factor reset, a total wipe uh, with okay. our device, which is something you can't do with the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, but th that's, uh, that's an additional to the fact that Shipping is no longer an issue. Mm -hmm. We allow you to check the status of every device without compromising the privacy. And so you can buy the device um, online anywhere in the world. or just in a random shop uh, out here in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And you will still feel safe buying it and putting your, um, your tokens there mm -hmm. because it's no longer an issue. Mm -hmm. So uh, finishing up our interview, do you have any last comments to our Korean viewers on how they can improve their security? Well, first off, buy a hardware wallet. Doesn't have to be ours. Buy a hardware wallet. Use uh, security protocols and follow recommendations of security experts on how to protect your tokens and how to protect your uh, wallet, basically. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Aya Moshe, the CEO of Hub Security. Thank you for watching. Thank you.